Tonight's guest hustler is TV presenter and Dancing on Ice finalist, Laura Hamilton. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen today. Currently in a park, near a pond. It's pretty wet and windy. I'm completely in an unknown world here, so um, it's a little bit daunting. I'm going to give it my best shot to uh, be a good hustler. I know from watching the programme that I often feel really sorry for the mark and think, oh, that's so cruel. How can the hustlers be doing that to them? So the fact that I'm going to be doing that myself, I'm going to feel really evil. Hello. Hi. Good weather for it. Well, I thought I'd bring the rain with me from London. <laughs> How are you? I'm Alex. Laura, nice to meet you. You ready for today? I feel really naughty um, <laughs> and nervous. Meeting in a park. But yeah. What are you going to do? What's going to happen? All right, well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. Today, you're going to play two parts. You're going to help somebody, and then you're going to become a victim. Okay. And then after you become a victim, we're going to make a lot of money. Right. All right, right. come with me and I'll tell you the rest. Anymore? I'll tell you the rest. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this rain. So to help the hustlers scan that cash, Laura's going to have her work cut out in the honey trap. Today, the hustlers are operating in an upmarket pub just outside a city centre. They park up outside a local hotel and get into position. Hot on the heels of the hustlers are these guys. They're here to buy a second-hand laptop from a stranger. This guy's holding the cash, and that makes him the mark. And the stranger in the bar just happens to be Jazz. I know you've come to get the laptop, right? Uh, I dropped it this morning uh, as I was bringing it down, and it's basically given a crack to the screen. Uh, so obviously I don't want to give you that because <laughs> it's broken. So I don't actually think I'm going to be able to get it to you today. I was hoping. So the laptop's be... not available yet. Shame. What's the mark going to do with the rest of his day and all that money in his pocket? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right, cheers, guys. The mark leaves the bar and walks straight into a bit of a scene. Sorry, can you just help me, please? Sorry. No, just sorry. It's such a <laughs> day. Sorry, can you just help me with that? <laughs> it's Jess playing the damsel in distress, and she clearly needs a helping hand. Here comes someone else to the rescue. Sorry, thank you. It's Laura. Are you okay? Posing as a staff member of the adjoining hotel. It's her job to make sure the guys accompany Jess back into the building. Come inside. Come on, bring her inside. Come on inside. <laughs> Job done. There's um, a quiet room if you go in there. <laughs> Jess keeps up the waterworks and the boys follow Laura into a quiet function room. A seat over oh, here. I'm so hot and everything just <laughs> so falling out of my back. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm just having a really issue. Sorry, have you got a second thing? Have you got yeah, a yeah. Do you want a glass of water? Yes, please. So what, else, what else was in that? Was it oh, just no, these no, two, no, was no. it? Can you just help me check it out so everything in yeah. my bag? The Mark has no real reason to hang about, but, being a gent, he wants to make sure poor Jess is OK. Uh, what? You, what happened? I'm just no, I'm really sorry, I'm just having a really Before he can leave, here come Alex and Paul, and they're about to make this situation a whole lot more complicated. She's in here. <laughs> Susie, you are right? Oh, sorry. Oh, what are you still doing here? Who are these guys? This is my... This is my what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Susie? Sorry? These guys obviously mean business. What's your name? Jane, I'm, I'm going to have to go back to work. Have a seat, That's Jane. Right, just... The Mark is trying to work out what he's got himself into. What's your name? I'm James. Hey, Steve. <laughs> What's wrong? Why are you upset? Alex and Paul are playing Jess's bosses. Sounds like they're not very happy about something. Is that my money in that bag? I was just taking it to the bank. Is that, was that what you wanted? Can I count the money in the bag, please, Susie? Yeah. Why are you trying to hide the money? No, I'm not. What? I wasn't. She just basically just met her outside and packed up. The Mark doesn't know anything about any money. Guys, I've really got to get back to work. Sorry, just, you could uh, just sit there for a second. Just we'll give us a few up. minutes. What's going on? Alex makes sure Laura stays put as he counts out the money from Jess's bag. Please, what is going on? I haven't got a clue what's going on. <laughs> Are you no, does he? Are we, just... we are 
1,570 pounds short. OK, so can I look through the rest of your bag, please? There's over 1,500 quid missing from the bar's money bag. And Alex suspects Jess's light fingers. I don't know what's going on. Susie, I need to look at your bag, sweetheart, because if the rest of the money is in here, then something's not right. I'd like it always. It's I don't want to take her over there and uh, give her a handkerchief or something, will you? Come with me, calm down. I, know, I don't understand look, why. Calm down, we'll find I don't out understand what's happening. What's happening. Right. Alex takes Jess away to find out where the missing money is. I think that they, they picked everything up on my bag and that everything was in there. Wait a minute, hold on. So what are you saying, that the, the rest of the money is where? Where's the money? I don't know, you picked everything up. I That's don't know. news to him. Everything outside. I've not, so no, they've I've got, got it. Anything no. out. So they've got your money? I Did you pick anything, anything up? Paper, my only hang up right, we're £1,570 £1, pounds short. All right, hold on, hold on. I've never even seen that girl in my life. Have a seat. Yeah. Honestly, I've never seen this girl in my life. I'm just like, Where do you live? I can tell you don't know her at all? I've never seen her in my life. I, I'm on my break and I've got to get back to work. What's that money there? What's that? It suddenly dawns on the mark that he does have a big wad of cash in his pocket. The £1,500 for the laptop. He decides to come clean. You got money on you? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a word with you outside? Yeah, have a word with my colleague for a second. On that bombshell, Alex takes Laura out of the way, leaving Paul to ramp up the pressure. How much money you got on you? Uh, we basically were working a guy for a laptop just there. So you just happen to be I here? No, I know it looks like pure ridiculous, but like I've got the text and I've had to prove it. Like, I'm going to sit still. Yeah, it's, it's, it's That's right. a lot of money. I know, I know. You just happen to be. Yeah, that just happens to be, yeah. It all sounds a bit too much of a coincidence. Now, I know you're telling me you don't have it, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Right now, hotel worker Laura is being given a going over by Alex in the hallway. That's 1,500. And this guy's got an awful lot of explaining to do about all that cash. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? I know it is a hell of a coincidence. He's left wondering what on earth he's got himself into and how he will ever get back out. Presenter Laura Hamilton helped Jess put this mark in a very sticky situation. I don't understand Calm what's down. going on. Just Susie, I need to look at your bag, sweetheart. Jess stands accused of stealing bar takings from bosses Alex and Paul and has pointed the finger at the mark. Where's the money? I don't know, you picked everything up. Though he's totally innocent, he's actually carrying a very incriminating £1,500. That's a lot of money. I know, I know. And he thinks he's in deep, deep trouble in The Honey Trap, part two. Let's have a seat for me, will you? Laura comes back into the room. Uh, Give me a second, will you? This is Paul's cue to leave. Susie, please just stay there. Just Susie. stay there. Stay it's there. Laura's big moment. Guys, look, I thought... I don't know what's going on, but whatever they say, just do, because yeah, I, do. I, I'm like... <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to kind of mess with them. I'm just like... <laughs> right now, Laura is alone with the Mark and his mate. She's been sent in to convince him that the hustlers mean business. And the Mark isn't arguing. All right, I need to count this. Yeah, I think okay. that's fine with you. I'm um, sorry to... Yeah. No, it's fine, it's just, but, you know, yeah, this yeah, money yeah, does yeah, not belong yeah. to Susie, I mean, it belongs to yeah, our... Yeah. The guys return, and Alex makes a big show of counting the Mark's cash. He's convinced it's the cash that Jess has stolen from them. The Mark can't believe what's happening. That's 1,500, plus the 70 from you, that's 1,570. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? I know it is a hell of a coincidence. How are they going to resolve this terrible situation? You know, boys, I've got to call the police no matter what happens here. Yeah, that's but, fine. That is absolutely fine. But, all right, all right. That's... Let me um, have a word with her for me, will you? Do you want to tell me now where the money is? I told you that. that, that I haven't got it in my bag. That, that'll be it there. That's not. I've got it in my bag, have I not? That'll be 
But you realise that we're missing a lot of money. Yeah, but I dropped everything. They probably just picked it up. Jess is still claiming that money came from a handbag. The fact you got all this money, I've got to check it. Do you understand? I know that makes sense. Looking more nervous by the second, the mark has no choice but to agree to allow Paul to check the cash. Just tell me honestly now, you did not get this money from her. 100%, that is my, that is okay. my wages. Like. Laura's protesting her innocence too. Can you take a photograph of this? Yeah. I'm going to take a photograph of some yeah. of these serial numbers. Yeah, Fair enough. Exactly. We've got all the serial numbers back at the office. There is a way to sort this out. Alex is going to check the serial numbers of the Mark's notes against ones they photographed back at the office. As they already suspected Jess of stealing, it was a trap they set for her. Right, keep all the money together just now if you don't mind. All the cash, Jess's, Laura's and the Mark's, goes into the same bag. So what I'll do is, why don't you come with me, you stay with the money. Okay, take about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and sort this out. How does that sound? Right. All right. So the mark comes to the bar, and Laura watches the cash. In fact, what does, she have, have, what does she have, 70 pounds? 70, yeah. All right, why don't you come with us? This is your money, you stay with your money. No, change of plan. The mark had the most cash, so it's only fair he stays with the blue money bag. I didn't we'll do anything. I didn't take it. They Come probably on. got that yeah. on the table. Yeah. As Laura and the other hustlers leave, Paul has a few reassuring words for the mark. Listen. Yeah. She's done this before. Yeah. She's dropped people right in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And the thing is, there's nobody to back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've taken a record of everything yeah. she took out. She went nowhere near the bank, okay. and we saw her drop it off. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah. Promise me you'll be here in 10 minutes. Yeah, no, me. All not right? All right, we'll be right back. I want your word on it. I'm here, I'm here. Paul makes the mark shake on it. The mark breathes a sigh of relief. Hopefully, this whole mess will be sorted out soon. And after all, he's been left looking after all the cash. The mark waits. <laughs> And waits. And waits. There's no sign of the hustlers returning, and the mark is starting to tear his hair out. But he's still too scared to touch the money bag. A full hour of waiting later, the mark has had enough, and he has a look inside the money bag. There's the envelope, but it contains precisely zero pounds sterling. No. Is Here's what he didn't see. Earlier today, Jazz scouted the area for the laptop deal. As well as a bar, he wanted a quiet room nearby just like this one. He then stashed a blue money bag on the table. Later on, when Alex counted the Mark's cash, it went into an identical blue bag. Whilst the Mark was stressing out, Alex switched one blue bag for the other, concealing the one with the cash inside the newspaper. Why don't you come with me? You stay with the money. Susie, come on, in the car. The hustlers walked out with all the Mark's money. I want your word on it. Come here. Leaving him looking after nothing but a load of worthless newspaper. But by this time, the hustlers were long gone, along with his 1,500 pounds. Finally, computer salesman Jazz was picked up just around the corner, and the getaway was complete. I was so scared. I was thinking, how is anyone going to believe me about this money? I was like terrified. I was like, I'm just going to cooperate fully with these guys, and I didn't want to leave because I thought I'm not having these people after me and stuff like that. But 
I think you should be careful and check your money and stuff like that as well. Like. When the cash was being counted on the table, um, I kept looking over at the guys and I could see they were really scared. I mean, my, my heart was really racing um, and I was pretty scared too. I just felt like I was totally in the situation and really, really felt for them. I mean, I really think they thought if they don't give the money over, something was going to happen to them. I think people that actually do this for work in the real world quite clearly have no morals. I mean, the, the boys were genuinely feeling for Jess. They wanted to help her, comfort her, pick her bits and pieces up. And yet, you know, when you, someone's good natured and you, and you play on that, it's a pretty nasty thing to do. Please don't let this scam put you off helping someone in distress. There's nothing wrong with doing a good deed, but when you're suddenly faced with a demand for cash, then you should know that all is not as it seems. If anyone tries to pressure you into handing over your money, you have the right to walk away or call the police for assistance. Consider that the entire situation may have been orchestrated just to separate you from your cash. The best advice here is to call the police. You can't know what's going on in this argument. You can't get beneath the surface. Let the professionals deal with it. 